Okay, now let's look for a minute at some of the algebra of inverse functions. Uh, look at this example, f of x is equal to x squared. Think of a function as having an input value, in this case x, put in some number for x, and then we get out an output, which we call y or f of x. And in this case, this is real simple. If the input is 5, then what we get out, the output is 25. And this idea of input and output is a useful way to think about functions. Now the inverse of x squared, you can probably see, is the square root function, the square root of x. What if we take 25 and put it in as our input here? In this case, if the input was 25, we put in 25 there. What do we get out over here? We get out 5. So you can see that the inverse function does the reverse of the function. If we put in 5 and get out 25, we can undo that by putting in 25 into the inverse of the original function, and then we get out our original value. So a good way to think about a function and its inverse is that the inverse of a function will undo whatever the original function does. So x squared and the square root of x are inverse functions. All right, now let's look at some algebraic examples. We're going to do some examples where we're given a function and we're told to find the inverse. So in the first case, f of x is 3x plus 5 over 7, and we want to find the inverse. There's a pretty straightforward technique for doing this. I take the function, and instead of writing it as f of x equals this, I just write it as y equals that, which essentially means the same thing. And now that it's written in terms of x and y, I then switch the x and y values. And so I get x equals 3y plus 5 over 7. And then I take what I get after switching the x and y, and I solve that for y. So then solve for y. And what I get when I solve this for y will be the inverse of my original function. So I'm going to just come up here where I have a little bit more room and I'm going to multiply both sides by 7 and I get 7x equals 3y plus 5. This is just routine algebra here. So 7x minus 5 equals 3y. So y is going to equal 7x minus 5 over 3. That is the inverse of the original function. And I would write it like this. I would say f inverse of x equals 7x minus 5 over 3. Remember this notation here with the little negative 1 in the superscript position looks like an exponent, but it's not. That just means f inverse. The inverse of function f, f is this. So instead of 3x plus 5 over 7, I have 7x minus 5 over 3, a function and its inverse. If I were to graph those, you can see that this is a line and this is also a line, but they would be reflections across the line y equals x. We could see that graphically, but we've already looked at a few examples graphically. We're looking algebraically now. Example 2, f of x is equal to sine squared of 3x, find f inverse. Okay, we'll apply, again, our, our very straightforward technique. Rewrite this. But instead of saying f of x is equal to this, say y equals this. y equals sine squared 3x. And then switch x and y. So I get x equals sine squared 3y. And then I have to solve this for y. Well, notice that this is the sine of 3y squared. So the first thing I need to do is take the square root of each side. So I get the square root of x is equal to sine of 3y. Now I'm trying to solve this for y. y right now is stuck inside this sine function. So to get it out, I need to take the inverse sine. So I can do pretty much whatever I want to do to an equation as long as I do the same thing to each side. In this case, I'll take the inverse sine of each side. So on the left side, I have the inverse sine of the square root of x, and on the right side, when I take the inverse sine of this, I just get 3y, because the inverse sine and the sine function undo each other. 
the inverse sine of the sine of something is just that something. So when I take the inverse sine of the right side, I just get 3y. And now solving for y is just a matter of dividing by 3. So y is equal to the inverse sine of the square root of x over 3. And that's my inverse. That is the inverse of my original function. Okay, one more example. f of x is equal to 7 to the power of 2x plus 5. So this is an exponential function. Our variable here is up there in the exponent. We're supposed to find the inverse, so we would expect the inverse of an exponential function to be a logarithmic function. And sure enough, we have a base 7 exponent here. We'll end up using a base 7 log to solve this. So again, the same procedure works. We rewrite the function using the notation y equals 7 to the 2x plus 5 and again that just means the same thing as this but now this is written in a way where we can conveniently switch the x and y variables so now we have x equals 7 to the power of 2y plus 5 and we need to solve this for y and right now y is up there in the exponent with a base of 7 I can get rid of a base 7 exponent by using a base 7 logarithm so I'll take the base 7 log of each side. So on the left, I have log base 7 of x. And on the right, I have 2y plus 5. Because if I do the base 7 log of 7 to the power of something, the base 7 log and the base 7 exponent go uh, un undo each other. And we're just left with 2y plus 5 for the right-hand side. And then solving this for y is fairly trivial. Just subtract 5 from each side and you get log base 7 of x minus 5 equals 2y so y will equal the base 7 log of x minus 5 all over 2 and that right there is the inverse of our original function so this is you could write it with this notation f inverse of x